time now for Top That Trade. Phil Flynn, a Fox Business Network contributor, and Alan Nuckman, a pro options trader. Join me now for round number one, guys. Oil Energy, the United Kingdom, will have more car charging stations than petrol stations by 2020. Can crude go higher from here? Well, that's an interesting fact, but I don't think that's going to hurt crude oil's performance. We had that reversal, that big reversal a couple weeks ago where we had that lower weekly low, multi-month lows, and then close higher, and it's built since then. A move above 50 can send this quickly to 60 to get the short scrambling once again. Well, I, I'll tell you what, I agree with Alan, and I'll tell you what, I've been saying since the beginning of the year. Of at, time. Oil's at generational low. What are you talking about, time? No, the beginning I, of time. Beginning of the time. You were there when there were the dinosaurs that turned into the press that turned into oil. So well, you were there for that. I was there for that. Uh, me and Fred Flintstone were watching the oil creating. But listen, this is a, an opportunity of a lifetime, and unless there's some new breakthrough in technology, we're going to see oil prices get back up to $100 a barrel in a couple of years. We're seeing one of the biggest systemic pullbacks in energy investment in history, in oil investment. And we're going to see non-OPEC production fall pretty dramatically next year. I think the market's starting to realize that. And with the global economy not falling off the map like everybody was predicting a year ago, demand is going to exceed expectations. We're in a real bull market So you're here. saying higher. Let's move on to round number two, cash chat. The dollar has declined down to pre-Brexit levels. How do you cash in now? Uh, the dollar, I think, post-Brexit, I, I think we've topped on the dollar short term. I mean, the well, dollar that's a positive was a safe haven. It is a positive for us. another okay. reason. And I think if you look at where we were a year ago, why were people buying the dollar? They were buying the dollar because they thought China was going to fall apart. They were buying the dollar because of the fear of the Brexit. They were buying the dollar because we were the best ones on the street looking to raise so everybody interest was rates. So everybody was scared is what you're saying. Basically, yes. I mean, we were buying the dollar for the wrong reasons. Listen, the Fed is, you know, the Fed minutes that came out. Uh, last week is showing rates. that the Fed can't raise rates because they're looking for inflation. Right. And you're never going to see inflation play, with a strong dollar because cash, that's offsetting inflation. My cash play is Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank has been crushed. It's down 50% in the last year, but it's sitting on a lot of cash. It's sitting on 129 billion euros. That's even more than dollars, in case you were wondering. Uh -huh. uh, but to quantify that, that works out to be uh, 18 uh, right. big moving vans worth of cash. Right. Or Somebody ought to explain the exchange 12, rate to him because 12, it's the same. Average size hotel room just full of cash. These guys are flush with cash. They were concerned that they had a liquidity problem. Not so much. Deutsche Bank has been beaten down, been trading here between 13 and 15, near term 17, and then 20, and it's still got a long ways to Why go. Why is sending out a lot of good ca uh, cash good for these guys when you're in a world of negative interest rates cash right now? Cash is good. Cash is good if you're losing value every day when you hold on to cash and it's losing I'm value saying, and they keep pretty bank, poor of it. If you're a bank, if that's a bank. what they do. They collect cash. I know they do, and they shouldn't be. We want to get it into the economy to grow, and if they don't do that, the cash isn't going to be worth anything it's an under, anyway. It's an undervalued distressed stock, so go. unless rats come into the vaults, I think they're going to be good. There you go. Listen, let me explain negative interest rates. It's like lending Alan five bucks. You never get paid back, and when you do, it's only three bucks. All right, next question. Next question is metal, metal. Olympians have to pay taxes on their metal wins. Are you a buyer of gold or are you a silver guy? Seriously, you got to charge these guys on their metals. I understand they get cash. I understand paying that for your metals. Give me a break. This it's the American I way. No. I know you don't like it. That's why I put this well, in here because well, it's the American way. Well, they want Every pay. opportunity to turn the screw they do on people. Well, well this is what I, I think we should do. The guy who wins the bronze, he doesn't have to pay any taxes but he comes in third. So whoever gets the bronze should pay for the gold guy. That's where I look oh, at it. Oh, there you go. The loser Socialism. should pay. Socialism. No, yeah. no, it isn't They're gonna socialism. Subsidize, they're going to subsidize the gold guy. No, they, they're the subsidized. gold guys were the right, winners. Anyways, so the bronze guys are the losers. They should I pay the taxes. Now, with this dollar as our theme, I think that gold is going to take a swing above 1400 and really get smoking. All right. 1450 is the bigger target. All right. That's the halfway level of that. Big all-time high wait, to that wait, to get, that low. Let's low. get to the big question, the final question of the day. I hold more golds. I think you hold 15 <laughs> bronzes, and, and there's only two In people life, playing this game. Here is your bonus round question for today, and your opportunity to play our little Gold, Olympic silver, game. Gold, Name the highest money-scoring Olympic athlete. Okay. Is it Michael Phelps, Kevin Durant, or Gabby Douglas? I say Gabby Douglas. I'm confused by the question, but I'm going to say Kevin Durant because he makes a lot of you, money. You he nailed does. it. A 10 from the American judge. The answer is Kevin Durant. He makes $150,000 per day, guys. 
Woo-hoo, that's today. not bad money. Not a bad day. Not bad. That's a good day. Thanks so much. Business First AM continues right after this.